Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. In this particular topic, we are going to deal with the secondary maximas that are present in our n-slit diffraction pattern. So, how do we find out the intensity of this secondary maximas? Let us see how do we do that. The intensity due to an n-slit diffraction pattern is given by i is equal to a into sine beta upon beta the whole square sine of n gamma upon sine gamma the whole square wherein all the symbols have their respective values. So how do we find out the intensity of the secondary maxima? So it will be di upon d gamma is equal to a into sine of beta upon beta the whole square into 2 sine of n gamma upon sine gamma multiplied by we will continue over here this is going to be equal to n into cos of n gamma into sine of gamma minus cos of gamma into sine of n gamma and this entire thing divided by sine of gamma square this will now turn out to be equal to we have to equate it to zero hence we have n of cos of n gamma into sine of gamma is equal to cos of gamma into sine of n gamma. So this is going to be equal to n cos of n gamma into sine gamma is equal to cos of gamma into sine of n gamma. And hence this is going to be equal to tan of gamma is equal to Suppose there is an n over here, n into tan of gamma into tan of n times gamma. So all the values of gamma that satisfy this particular equation will give you the positions of the secondary maximas. The equation that we have obtained is n into tan of gamma is equal to tan of n gamma. This can alternatively be written as n upon cot of gamma. But tan of n gamma is nothing but the slope. So that's what I write down. So I complete a triangle with the help of this n gamma. Tan of n gamma is the opposite side which is n divided by the adjacent side which is equal to cot of gamma. And to complete it, since this is a pipe, and to complete it, we can use the Pythagoras theorem for this right angle triangle, and the hypotenuse will be equal to n square plus cot square. Yeah. The next thing which we do is we try to find out how much is sine of n gamma, and your sine of n gamma will be equal to the opposite side, which is going to be equal to n divided by square root of n square plus cot square gamma. After this, we try to find out what is sine of n gamma upon sine of gamma, which turns out to be n upon square root of n square plus cot square into gamma. And this, of course, it is multiplied by 1 upon sine of gamma. I now take the square of this over here. This means I take the square here, I take the square here, and here also there will be a square. And once I do that, it will be sine of n gamma whole square divided by sine of gamma square 
is equal to n square divided by the square root sign will go this will be equal to n square plus cot square gamma into sine square gamma which of course can be simplified to n square divided by n square into sine square gamma and plus this will be equal to cos square gamma. The next step will be equal to n square divided by n square into sine square gamma plus cos square gamma. I am adding plus sine square gamma and I am subtracting the same value minus of sine square gamma. So this cos square gamma sine square gamma become, becomes equal to 1. So this sine square gamma plus cos square gamma becomes equal to 1. And now I substitute this as and simplify it to obtain n square divided by the denominator will simplify to n square minus 1 into sine square gamma and plus 1. So this is what the expression that you are obtaining for your sine n gamma upon sine of gamma the whole square. So ultimately the expression for sine of n gamma upon sine of gamma the whole square simplifies to n square divided by bracket n square minus 1 multiplied by sine square gamma plus 1. We have to simplify this still further or rather we have to deduce from this what will happen if n increases. What happens to the intensity of the maximum? And for that, we have to take a particular ratio. Let's see how we take this particular ratio. So we know that sine of n gamma, the whole square, upon sine of gamma, the whole square is equal to n square upon 1 plus n square minus 1 into sine square gamma. At the same time, we also know that the intensity of the principal maxima is actually equal to principal maxima will actually be equal to n square or I can say it is proportional to n square. So this intensity I divided by the intensity of the secondary maxima and we have this expression right over here and this we can write it down as n square into so now we consider the intensity of the principal maxima the ratio of the intensity of the principal maxima to to the ratio of the intensity of the secondary maxima. So we have the intensity of the principal maxima as proportional to n square and this intensity of the secondary maxima is n square divided by this factor 1 plus n square minus 1 into sine square of gamma. So you can see from here that this and this actually will cancel off and you can see that this factor will actually come out to be 1 plus n square minus of 1 into sine square of gamma, right? So what happens here? If the number of n is tending to infinity or rather as I am actually increasing the total number of n values over here, the ratio of the intensity of the principal maxima to the ratio of the intensity of the secondary maxima, that actually what happens to that? So this situation suggests that the intensity of the secondary maxima becomes negligible as your n will actually tend to infinity. So this means 
it is the intensity of the principal maxima that takes over the intensity of the secondary maxima. Hence, for a diffraction grating, which at times has around 15,000 lines per inch, it will not matter. The intensity of the secondary maxima will not be of importance and it is only the intensities of the principal maximums that will be important. Sincere thanks students for watching this particular video. Stay tuned to our channel eGira and do subscribe to our channel eGira. Thanks a lot.